If you're struggling to understand native English speakers, you're in the right place. We're going to improve your listening skills so you can understand native speakers the first time. Welcome back to J4S English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. Here's how this lesson will work. I'm going to say a sentence three times and you need to write down exactly what you hear in the comments. After, I'll explain exactly what I said and I'll explain the pronunciation changes that take place in fast English and I'll also explain the advanced expressions that I used. Are you ready for your first listening test? Remember, I'll say it three times. They've been bickering all day. They've been bickering all day. They've been bickering all day. Did you get this one? I said, they've been bickering all day. Let's talk about the pronunciation changes. Notice I have they've. This is a contraction. They have, they've, they've, they've. Native speakers use contractions in spoken English almost 100% of the time, so you need to be very, very comfortable hearing the contraction because it affects the grammar of the sentence. You need to have, they have been bickering because that shows the grammar and the grammar is the present perfect continuous. So if you didn't have that, it would be grammatically incorrect. They've been bickering all day. Now notice I said been, been, a very unstressed been. This is how we pronounce the past participle of the verb be, been, in American English. I don't speak British English, but I believe in British English they pronounce it more stressed, been, but in American English we don't do that. We just say been, been, they've been, they've been bickering, all day. Now to understand fast English outside of the classroom, you need to hear the individual words, but you also have to understand the meaning of the words. So let's talk about the verb to bicker. This is when you argue about things that are not important. The concept of bickering is extremely common and everyone does it. And we usually do it with people we spend the most time with. Our family, our spouses, husbands and wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, our close friends, our coworkers that we spend a lot of time with. Anytime you spend a lot of time with someone, it's common that you'll bicker. But it's different from fighting because when you're fighting with someone, usually there's a strong emotion involved, but when you bicker, you don't really have that emotion. It's less serious because the things you're arguing about, fighting about, are not actually important. Like I said, this can be very common in the workplace when you spend a lot of time with your coworkers. So maybe you're in a meeting and you've been discussing an issue for hours with your coworkers, but people start bickering. They start arguing about things that aren't important. You could say, we didn't get anything done today because we bickered all meeting. We argue, we bicker. Yeah, we bicker. <laughs> Either. Yeah, well, we were bickering because they were bickering. Mark, your kids are bickering. Let's try this again with another listening exercise. I'll say it three times. That street's pretty sketchy. That street's pretty sketchy. That street's pretty sketchy. How'd you do with this one? I said, that street's pretty sketchy. Did you hear that streets, the S? Well, that is the verb to be in a contraction form. The street is the streets. The streets pretty sketchy. Again, it's extremely important that you hear these contractions for grammar because we need the verb to be grammatically. The sentence would sound very awkward if you didn't have it because it would be grammatically incorrect. That street's pretty sketchy. Sketchy, 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 sketchy. 
Let's talk about to be sketchy. That street is our verb to be, to be sketchy. This is used to say that something is not completely safe. So by saying that street's pretty sketchy, I am saying that street doesn't look completely safe. I don't think that street is safe. So I'm saying we shouldn't go down that street. We should avoid that street. Now, why would I say this street is sketchy? This is an adjective that native speakers use a lot. If I say a street's sketchy, it's most likely because it's dark or lacks lighting. There aren't a lot of people around. There's broken glass or broken windows, or there are a lot of abandoned buildings on that street. It could be all of those reasons, or it could be just one of those reasons for me to say that street doesn't look safe. That street pretty sketchy. I could say, let's take another street. This one looks sketchy. So I can also use the verb look, look sketchy, but I have to conjugate it. This street looks sketchy. Or let's say your friend or your husband or your wife came to you and said, hey, I heard this amazing business proposal today. All we need to do is invest $1,000 and we're guaranteed $100,000. And you could say, that sounds sketchy. So notice here, the verb is to sound sketchy. And you're saying the idea, the plan, the business proposal doesn't sound completely safe. We also use this to describe people. He's a sketchy guy or he's sketchy. She's sketchy. In this case, you're saying the person isn't safe, which means you can't trust the person. So with people, it's a way of saying, I don't think I can trust him. She's sketchy. He's sketchy. Seems a little sketchy. <laughs> you're kind of sketchy laundry to some sketchy laundromat? Let's try another listening exercise. I'll say it three times. You must have seen it. You must have seen it. You must have seen it. Did you get this one? You must have seen it. But notice, I didn't actually say have. I reduced that entirely to just a. Uh. You must a. Uh. You must uh. I could also reduce it to more of an of sound, which is very commonly done by native speakers. You must of. You must of. You must have seen it. Notice for seen it, I use that n, that n sound to connect the two words together. Seen it. Seen it. Seen it. So you hear a n in front of it. It sounds like knit. But if you say those two words together, it blends together. Seen it, seen it. You must have seen it. Now let's talk about the grammar of this. Must is a modal verb. And grammatically, you need must plus base verb, which is the verb without to. So grammatically, you need must have. In written English, you must use must have seen it because that's grammatically correct. But in spoken English, it will sound like must a uh, or must of. But in written English, if you wrote you must a uh, or of, it would be incorrect grammatically. So just remember what I'm explaining is for spoken English. You must have seen it 200 times. You must have seen it too, Claire. You must have seen them here. Let's try this one more time. I'll say it three times. What's the ETA? What's the ETA? What's the ETA? I said, what's the ETA? Of course, we have what's. That's a contraction of what is. What's. What's the. Now, because ETA it begins with a vowel sound, E, I could say either the or the, because we do a more stressed the when the next word starts in a vowel, but this isn't a rule that native speakers follow all the time. 
but if I did a more stressed E in the, it would really blend together with ETA, the TA, and it would almost sound like it's just one word, the TA, because I wouldn't really repeat the E on ETA, the TA. I believe in my example, when I did the listening test, I think the first time I did it more of the ETA, and the second time I did it more of the ETA, and the sounds blended together. Let's listen to that again and see what I did. What's the ETA? What's the ETA? What's the ETA? Now, ultimately, either way that you pronounce it, the ETA or the ETA is fine. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what's ETA? This stands for estimated time of arrival. So your ETA, the ETA, or someone, something's ETA is the estimated time of arrival for that someone or something, when it's expected to arrive. So let's say we're talking about a project and your boss wants to know when this project will arrive in his inbox or on his desk. He could say, what's the ETA? And he could just say the, if it's obvious you're talking about the project. He could say, what's your ETA? Because you're the one submitting the project. Or he could say, what's the project's ETA? So the ETA belongs to the project, so you need that possessive. What's the project's ETA? And they all have the same meaning. We commonly use this with friends or coworkers, family members, to let them know when we're going to arrive. So let's say you were supposed to be at your family's house at seven o'clock for dinner, but you're running late. You could send them a text message and say, running late, Google says my ETA is 6.42 or 15 minutes. Now, Google says, because when you put something in a GPS, Google will tell you, or whatever you use, Google will tell you when you're expected to arrive. That's your ETA. What's their ETA? Okay, ETA? ETA, 11 minutes. Now let's do an imitation exercise so you can practice your pronunciation as well. So I'm going to say each sentence again. And then I want you to repeat the sentence out loud and try to imitate my pronunciation as closely as possible. And I'll say each sentence three times. Let's do that right now. They've been bickering all day. They've been bickering all day. They've been bickering all day. That street's pretty sketchy. That street's pretty sketchy. That street's pretty sketchy. You must have seen it. You must have seen it. You must have seen it. What's the ETA? What's the ETA? What's the ETA? Did you enjoy testing your listening skills? If you did and you want me to make more lessons just like this, then put more, more, more in the comments. Put more, more, more in the comments so I know you want me to make more lessons just like this. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. In this lesson, we focused on your listening skills. So why don't you watch this lesson and you'll focus on your reading skills. Watch it right now.